From the top of the CBS Interactive Building in San Francisco, California, it's the Apple Byte Extra Crunchy with your host, Brian Tom. Goodness! And my co-host, oh. Stephen Beach. Yes, co-host let's not, let's not forget. with the most. With the most, man. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Apple Byte Extra Crunchy. This is our pre-Thanksgiving, pre-Black Friday edition. We want to welcome everyone who is watching on Periscope. If you guys ever get my tweets, you guys can watch along with the show. But also, really, this is for all of you listening over audio. We bring some video elements. We bring all types of things to the game, right? Yeah, the video is a bonus. It's a bonus. So if you bonus. watch the video, you're lucky. It's just a bonus. If you're periscoping, you can barely hear Steven. It's because this is made for people who are listening. I'm about five feet away from that <laughs> scope. He is five feet away, but we still feel very close to each yes. other. Yes. Very close. Very so, intimate. again, this is a show where we want to make you guys and gals a part of it. 1 800 616 2638 is the phone number to call. Allows you to leave your name, tell us where you're from, get to your point, whether you have a question or a comment you want to make. We will talk about it. We love all the contributions. We still get, I don't even want to say, t- there's we more than lot. tons. A, we lot, get a, lot a lot of, of voice calls. Now, which is awesome, man. And I have to go through it all. <laughs> and we can only choose three or four just for the sake of the show. We want to move things along, but we appreciate it. So thank you. Keep on calling 1 800 616 2638. So let's jump into the show. We're just before. Black Friday, and I feel like it's my duty, my obligation to educate you guys on some of the places where you'll want to be for some of the best deals that are out there when we're talking about Apple products, okay? Which is very rare because they do not do sales. Apple does not do sales often. No, not often. And if historically, Apple product sales, if you go into an Apple store, their sales are pretty weak. They'll do Black Friday. They'll do like a list of 10 products. And then give you anywhere from five to ten percent off. I know it's it's like, totally weak. Yeah, it's, it's basically weak. sales tax. <laughs> exactly. From a mul- a company that is literally sitting on billions of dollars. We're gonna give you ten dollars off this seven hundred dollar <laughs> iPad. It's that bad, everybody. <laughs> it's almost a bad apple. Ah! All right. Anyways, let me just tell you a few places. I'm not gonna go down this list. If you guys want to check out, I got to give credit to Boy Genius Report bgr.com they really compiled this great list of all the discounts you guys can find iphone deals how about this if you trade in your iphone 5 or later you can then also purchase an iphone 6s or 6s plus and get a 200 dollars best buy gift card back that's pretty so good that's deal pretty right solid there. that is solid deal right a there. pretty solid deal right there overall most of the iphone deals are like here. Walmart, though, has the other good one. iPhone 6S with a two-year contract on either AT&T and Verizon. Save $100 and also get a $100 Walmart Black Friday gift card. Those are the two top deals when we're talking iPhone, okay? That's a pretty good deal, too. iPad, you can really go a lot of places. There are no Black Friday deals on the iPad Pro because Apple ain't going to go there, okay? But... If you want to look at something like the iPad Mini 4, remember best retina display. We talked about it last week. Or best LCD display on any tablet. You'll get about $100 uh, off if you go to Best Buy. Best Buy has a variety of iPads and different configurations. Pretty much $100 off across the board. Target is doing Target gift cards for around $100. Uh, That's really the best price that I could see out there, at least for an iPad Air 2. $150 $150 off from Staples. Yeah, Staples deal right here. $299 Apple iPad Mini 4, 16 gig. Save 100 bucks. That's Boo, yeah. Uh, if you're looking at Macs, MacBooks, iMacs, Best Buy is really the best place to go. You can save anywhere from $150 to $200 off of those machines. These are not gift cards. These are actual save cash, nice. which is important. Yes. No new Apple TVs are going on sale. Target does have the third generation for 25% off, which is nice. I'm not going to talk about headphones. Oh, wait, wait, hold up. If you want an Apple Watch, the place right now, Target. Oh, yeah. $100 off the 349 Apple Watch. That's pretty good. That's a great deal. Three, I would buy, I would recommend someone who wants to dabble with a smartwatch, 249 for an Apple Watch is, that's is pretty, fair to that's me. Decent, that's, yeah. that's fair to me. Yeah. For what it is, that's fair. That'd be fun to get in your stocking. That's a stocking stuffer if you're a rich person. (laughs) (laughs) So there you go. Some of the Black Friday deals just to be aware of pre-Black Friday deals. Uh, We also wanted to keep on kind of steamrolling through this. It's going to be a little shorter show because of the holidays. But we wanted to talk about 
the iPad Pro. We've talked about it like for three, <laughs> like for three or four episodes <laughs> yeah, yeah. in a row, right? <laughs> yeah. But this is a really cool thing. Hamza Sud, who's a developer who's really always been able to unearth new things from the SDKs and the code. He showed off a little quick video of iOS 9 hacked on an iPad Pro. Now, we know the iPad Pro does not have 3D touch, correct? It does not have a touch-sensitive screen. But this little bad boy here in my finger, in my hand, the Apple Pencil, does have pressure sensitivity. So he just showed this cool thing where you push in. You can do the whole peek and pop. Peek and pop. You can do peek and pop with an Apple Pencil on an iPad Pro. Nice. So again... For all you listening, no 3D touch on the iPad Pro, but with the pencil, you can pink a pop. I would be playing the video, but the the video says this browser does not support video <laughs> playback. And I have, what browser I, is I, this it? This is the most current version of uh, Firefox. Oh, so, that's brutal. Yeah, I don't know. Here, I'll see if I can get on uh, something else. So, anyways, you guys want to check that out? Pretty cool. Also, um, we we know the internet likes to break and destroy things. We already talked about how they tore this Apple Pencil apart. They have shown on iFixit a teardown of the Apple Pencil, kind of revealing the innards of it. They like sawed off the outer plastic shell of the coating to show this kind of its metal innards. The tip of the pencil on the iPad Pro is really unique. It has this nib, and it depending on the orientation that you put on display, you can detect that. Also adjust the pen stroke accordingly to that. We know of that about that. One unique thing, though, here is there's a little mini logic board, like kind of in this back end. It's actually folded in half and then is put inside the Apple Pencil. Wow. It has about five different components. It only weighs a gram. This thing has uh, antenna, Bluetooth. It also has a battery in it. Uh, iFixit rated it a 1 out of 10 for repairability, oh, wow. which is as low as that you is, can go. That is, yeah, that's not good. Because once the battery dies, there's no way to replace it. Uh, there's, there's just no way to repair this thing. There's a light. We know. We know. There's a lightning saw it open the way they're doing here. Yeah, they're using just a little cutter <laughs> on that video to just cut it open. You know, Johnny Ive. Whenever he sees these type of videos, he probably literally weeps. <laughs> yeah. It's like really, really sad upset. for him. This is not. This is not acceptable to what him. What are they doing to my pencil? <laughs> you do not want to cut the Apple pencil like that. First of all, it's a, form you need a diamond is cutter. You need a diamond cutter for that. <laughs> A diamond. It's made of diamonds. Only the finest diamonds. <laughs> All right. Um, also, if you're looking around the city and you're seeing these billboards, we're talking Apple TV. Apple is really pushing for the Apple TV with these new billboards, right, that are using that uh, test pattern that you see, that SMT, that SMPTE, those color bars, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The color bars that you're used to seeing on TV a long time ago, they're kind of playing off that. Mm-hmm. They're long vertical billboards. They're the horizontal ones. The thing that is ironic about this, though, to me, is there's not even actual TV on Apple TV. <laughs> like, it's funny. Yeah, they, they're working on that, though, right? They're working, they're working, on, working it. on it. They're working on it. This is not, you know, this is okay. A foreshadowing. Of maybe it's come. foreshadowing, but the biggest, the biggest flaw that the Apple TV doesn't have, it doesn't have a subscription service yet ready to roll, which would have made it, like, massively awesome. Oh, yeah. But they're still using the color bars. That's funny. I wonder... If this campaign was made already thinking that they would have the deals done yes. and they didn't change it and they still pushed it through. They're like, we can't get our money back on this 80 story ad that's hanging from this building <laughs> right here. Look at this. Look at this thing hanging down here. It's huge. So that's my that's my thinking. They had this ad campaign done already with the idea that TV was a part of it because there's no part of TV that is actually part of the Apple TV. I think that's a bad Apple, Brian. <laughs> it's bad it's 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 a premature apple bad apple <laughs> but funny. uh it, hopefully they do deliver that in 2016 there are no updates on the progress of the subscription service we apple has pretty much stayed mum even leslie moonvez has said that cbs is working with apple on that cbs finally released their own app to stream you know kind of their shows but you have to have a cable subscription uh we are waiting to see I'm gonna. Get, you want to take a little time? Oh, actually, we'll save that for uh, our prediction show. Let's okay, not. Okay, let's cool. not. Let's cool, not cool. burn that. But we want to continue to thank you all for listening and watching this show. We appreciate it so much, and because of you, we've got to give you the love that you need with our sponsors here, Scotty <laughs> Vest. Oh, you're all. What? How's he gonna get into this? You got music for this? There oh, we go. Okay. Me. Okay. Go ahead. 
This is Apple Byte music. I'm I just know, gonna groove that. Know, okay. Scotty Vest, the clothing company that designs multi pocket clothing, lets you carry all your devices. 42 pockets, iPod, iPhone, MacBook, Apple Watch. <laughs> that should be on your wrist. <laughs> all the gadgets under the sun you can think of. Specialist in functional fashion for over 15 years, Scotty Vest caters to tech junkies by cleverly engineering pockets to balance the load and keep you comfortable while giving you easy access to your electronic devices. Scotty Vest has the perfect holiday gift for all the gadget lovers in your life, including yourself. Brian Just, Tong. Why, thank you, Mr. Stephen Beecham. If you could, okay, 42 gadgets. Stephen, why don't you name four gadgets that you would put in your Scotty vest? Let's see. I would put my iPad, my iPhone, my, um, I'd throw my Roku in there. Why not? I just <laughs> cruise around with my Roku. Roku for the road, uh, My yo. Chromecast. Yeah. And I don't think my laptop, my, uh, my PC would fit in there, but. You know, your your laptop will actually. It will? It will fit in the back. It also provides <laughs> rear back protection from any bullets. Hell yeah. Like anyone's that's trying to All shoot right. you in the back, put your MacBook I'm in the bringing, back of your Scotty vest. It will protect you. I'm bringing my Acer Aspire everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's made of plastic. I don't know if it's going to last. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, 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 it might at least like <clears throat> mitigate that. Yeah. So Scotty vest, check them out. All you guys have to do is go to their website, scottyvest.com slash AppleBite. Get 20% off with the coupon code AppleBite. All right. That's with a Y T E. So don't type That's in right. the wrong code. You won't get 20% <laughs> right. off. That's right. It happens. I got to look out for you people that just jump to conclusions and do that stuff. All right. I like this one. Uh, we always talk about Apple patents and some of the things that Apple is looking to do, right? This one, let me just open this link first because, you know, it this probably looks helps. very interesting as I opened it up here. Apple has been granted their first major public transit-related patent. Now, I'm going to read this. This is going to so benefit you. me directly. Apple's newly granted patent generally relates to methods, systems, and computer programming products for determining transit routes through crowdsourcing for determining an estimated time of arrival of a vehicle and transit route at a given location. I don't know about you, Stephen. I don't know if I've ever heard of any... You know, I Any get type these, of I get these notifications on my phone what, every morning what, from is there a an company app called Google. Google Maps? Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every morning I get a little notification. Oh, it's gonna take you a little while to get to work. Okay, well I'm gonna run a little faster. <laughs> Thanks, Google. <laughs> Apple has been granted this patent. It's not specific enough of how it varies. Maybe the fact that this crowdsourcing might be related to iPhone users specifically, but this is you know, they took away transit directions and finally brought them back in iOS oh, 9. Oh, that's right. Just recently. Just recently. Like a month ago or something, Dude, right? like a month and a half ago. Didn't they buy, they bought, I'm pro, I could be wrong, but didn't Apple buy like a big, uh, like Waze or something? Not, well, Google has acquired Waze. Yeah, okay, Google's Google acquired did. Waze. Apple has acquired probably over the course of a year, three or four specific mapping type third party yeah. independent groups so that are now folding up. in. Yeah, they are, they are way major behind. trying to catch up. We've talked about it. There's no reason that Apple is compelled me to use Apple Maps yet. No. Seriously. In fact, in fact it's dangerous. Borderline dangerous. <laughs> Even when I use Yelp that's integrated with Apple Maps, I copy the address and I pop it into Google Maps because I know it's better. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, everyone on Periscope is like, yep, yeah, yeah, we do that. Sure. People sure. on Periscope, they're green. They're nodding their heads. Although I can't see them nod their heads, they're nodding their heads. <laughs> so, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how this – they need all the help they can get with their maps. We'll see how it plays out. Also, we told you about how Apple was developing the next Apple Watch 2. I'm curious on people on Periscope if they still want the Apple Watch 2. Just, just fire out your comments. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we can involve you guys in this. A rumor claims that Apple is now seeking a second supplier for the next gen watch. I see a lot of no's. I'll see a lot of no's. I see a lot of F no's. I see a lot of yes. Let, yes, I do. Yes, no. Okay. Here's the thing about this rumor that is a little concerning. Apple's looking for a second supplier. Because Quanta, who is currently their numero uno supplier for the Apple Watch, their earnings were lower than expected. Hmm. Apple Watch sales numbers are lower than they have expected. Apple still won't officially comment on that. And these second suppliers that they're looking for to help them are wary of this. Hmm. And they don't want to be sucked into something where they can't make their numbers as well by jumping into the Apple, kind of getting seduced by the fact that it's Apple, yeah, we're going to yeah, sell yeah. a lot, and then they don't sell as many units as they thought. Yes. Well, hmm, that's a that's a tough one to read. 
It is. We don't. It's very. It's of course. It's super speculation. Let's let's throw that out there. Yeah. But look at a company like Samsung who has benefited by being a component maker. Tons of their components are inside the iPhone, but it's different when you're talking about an iPhone versus an Apple Watch. Yes. Yes. So. We'll I see feel how- like do you think do you think that they Apple believes that a second supplier would help, you know, just spur. Apple Watch sales even more if they just have more of a more of a reach to their customers or something larger you know bigger growth ability to make more units so that ideally buzz will be greater because initially with the Apple Watch it took a long time for people to be able to even buy one yeah that's right just like the iPad Pro pencil huh which came out a week or two after the iPad Pro okay hold up <laughs> I also I pre-ordered that stupid pencil five minutes after that thing went on sale I have still yet to receive it. Oh my gosh! It's supposed to come this by the end of this week, where we will be gone. I think that's the number, th- the third bad apple of there's the a, show. There's a, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of <laughs> Apple been bad this week. That's what I'm saying. So uh, we'll see how that all shakes out with the Apple Watch. Um, in a story that I wanted to just bring up real quickly, it's kind of fun. It's kind of stupid. It's a little foot in mouth story. I don't know if you guys heard about this on the CBS This Morning show. Jimmy Iovine, who was part of the acquisition by Apple when they acquired Beats, and is now fronting with Dr. Dre, the Apple Music service. He was talking about a new Apple Music ad that has, you know, Taraji from Empire, legend Mary J. Blige, Kerry Washington, they're just grooving to music, talking about music and, like, having fun. Well, in this interview, he kind of, he got some people upset. I don't know if people are being oversensitive or not. Whatever, you decide. During the interview, when he was talking about that ad, he said, and I quote, women find it very difficult at times, some women, to find music. And Apple Music helps make it easier with playlists by curated by people. Now, he also said, I just thought of a problem. You know, girls are sitting around. You know, they're talking about boys or complaining about boys, you know, when they're heartbroken or whatever. And they need music for that, right? So it's hard to find the right music. You know, not everyone has the right list or knows a DJ or something. That's, uh, Dude. It's just stereotyping so, so crazily. It's so funny. It's like just like when guys sitting around watching the football game trying to decide what to listen to. You know? Wait, wait, wait! I, I have that know, problem. So that's funny. not a, that's not a generalization. That's a re, that's a real life issue. That's it's real just life. So funny, you know. It was just like, oh my gosh! Like, and then people were like, ah, now these days everyone's gonna complain about everything. Yeah. You say something like this, you're gonna hear about it. So he did apologize and say he should have chosen his words a little more wisely. But let's be honest, he really believes that. That's He said that was the basis of the TV commercial. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's like, were those talking points from the record label? Like, <laughs> women have a hard time finding their music? I don't know. Based on our user surveys, <laughs> clearly, that must be an issue. See, guys I, know exactly what song to listen to when they're broken up. I have yet to meet a girl who who has a hard time finding a song for an occasion. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just go straight to boys to men when I'm feeling that. Oh, yeah. When I'm feeling the heart, when the hearts are breaking, oh man, just gotta go boys to men all the time. That's funny. Just go water runs dry, man. Water yeah. runs dry, or on bended poor, knee. Poor women, always, their hearts are always broken, man. Clearly, it's only afflicting the women <laughs> of this world. Clearly. All right, and two quick stories to wrap things up. Apple Pay update. This is cool. According to the Wall Street Journal, Apple is expected to launch. Apple Pay is expected to launch in China by February 2016. We already know that the UK has got has received it now with American Express. Uh, also, sorry, other two banks in the UK are there, but Australia and Canada are under the American Express card uh, support for Apple Pay. With more coming soon, Square is also launching this really cool NFC reader to bring Apple Pay to smaller businesses. Nice. This is also um, using that chip card technology as well as Apple Pay. Oh, wow. So they haven't had a reader like this in the past. It's always just been the slide yeah. uh, to read. But this new contactless card reader, really cool. We already, already know how huge Square is for independent businesses, small businesses, food it. trucks. I use it all like the time. I love it. how crazy it is. Um, they're implementing this into, the, into their ecosystem. And it's smart. Apple Pay and Square, they are both have payment services, but... It's smart for Square to be like, we accept Apple Pay. Oh, sure. Yeah. Everyone should just it's accept dumb to tr- everything. Exactly. It's dumb to lock right out now. someone. You know, it's dumb to like take a product off of your website because there's competing products, Amazon, from like taking down the Apple TV because they thought that it would take away from Fire TV sales. No, that's just dumb. Well, Amazon like takes down authors' books to get, get their own books in there, you know? So, Amazon yeah, they probably took too. down tons of books so Jeff Bezos could put his wife's book on there. Yeah. He Come talks on. about his wife's book all the time and says like, <laughs> okay, there's like three interviews where he says, oh, 
it's not because she's my wife, but it's a really good book. Uh, but he's like said it multiple times. I'm like, okay, that's funny. Amazon can be evil, but props to them for landing that rocket today. Did you see that they landed a rocket? Did they really land? They a rocket? landed it. Yes. Where? I don't know exactly where it landed. I think it la- you know it landed somewhere on planet Earth, obviously, <laughs> but but they landed it upright, which is what Elon Musk has been trying to do. On oh, March, yeah. Right. And Bezos gets it on the first try. Whoa. Amazon Prime now, yo. It's a it's a it's a PP contest. I love how we'll just like content. talk crap about a company and be like, but they also do this thing that's so great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what? We love you guys. We want to hear your phone calls. Again, for you to be a part of the show, 1-800-616-2638 is the phone. You might as well put it on speed dial at the end of every show. We want to hear from you. We want to talk to you. We've got some calls, so uh, Stephen, just kind of rip through them, right? All right, here we go. We have a few calls, and let's start with number one. Hi, guys. Uh, My name is Fernando Rivera. I'm calling from Connecticut. I wanted to know if we can't use the new Apple Pencil for our, I guess, old iPads now. Is there something that's equivalent that we can buy? Thank you very much, long-time listener. Thanks. Bye. Yes, thank you so much for calling. Um, So what you can do actually to at least get some kind of pencil functionality, again, the pencil on the iPad Pro only works on the iPad Pro, but there's a stylus from 53Digital. Now, if you guys have ever played with this app called Paper, they actually make a physical stylus, and the cool thing about it is that it has, you know, the tip for using Plenty to draw and self. write. Sorry about that. But also, <laughs> hey, I heard a voice in my ear. It's okay. It was just ghosts, right? <laughs> yeah, just ghosts. Ghost. But it has a tip on the pencil, but also an eraser that you can use. So oh, really cool. That's cool. Check it out. It's, uh, it's a, actually called a pencil because it actually has an eraser, unlike other companies that make pencils without erasers. Yeah. I, Who could that I, be? I also have to point out that Sharon Vaknin did a, a how-to a couple of years ago. I think it's like three years ago on how to make a stylus that will work with an iPad. Okay. I'm not, gonna, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to hate on this, okay? I'm going to be very polite. It's, it's cool, though. It's a cool project, but I'm not going to bust out water and a sponge to make a stylus for my freaking Who iPad. Who knows, you know? Some guys might. You know? I'm not hating. I just pointed out. I'm just saying, this, it, to each their own. It came to mind. It's. I totally feel that's fair. I'm just not gonna bust out sponge and water oh. and a paper clip to make a stylus for my iPad. Instead, I'm gonna buy a Q-tips 99. Do you need Scotch oh, tape? No. Q-tips. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna cool comment that. anymore. It's cool. <laughs> All right. It's cool. Hey, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. It's All cheap. Right. It's cheap. It's free. That's All the right. best price. Free. Okay. <laughs> Voicemail number two. Hi, my name is Terrain. I'm from Phoenix. Uh, Arizona, I was calling to find out what's the best day if I was going one day out of the week for CES 2016, what would be the best day to go? Oh, this is a good one. Okay, so CES goers, although you won't see many Apple products there, there's a huge Apple section for all these accessories, third-party cases, companies and whatnot. CES is the Consumer Electronics Show. It is the Super Bowl for tech. This is ginormous. If you want to like drool over a TV screen that you won't be able to buy until 10 years, this is where you go. Yeah. Like really. You could see everything there. Like I saw televisions underwater last year as I was walking around. Three people, pr- people racing cars with their mind control. So, you know, yeah. it's it's totally awesome. W- wacky, wacky cool stuff like that. Uh 3D printing was made a huge splash out at CES a couple years ago. Last year now they're like 3D printing food. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, oh yeah, last year we were having 3D printed chocolates, yeah, candies. Stuff like that. Last year was like the year of the drone though. There were drones just oh, yeah. flying everywhere. It was so. it, it's yeah, it's still the year that it's the years of the drone, yeah. you know, if you ask me. So to your question, anyone that's interested in going to CES, first of all, it's only open to industry. And what does that mean? You either have to be a retailer, a buyer, someone who works in retail, someone who covers tech or tech. There are ways to kind of get around with it because I've seen people make up like sites and then get in to say that they did tech. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys figure that one out. <laughs> but it goes from January sixth to 9th which starts on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. If you want to avoid the crowds, go on Saturday Mm, or even late Friday. Because that's when everything kind of dies down, right? Everything dies down for the general consumer who somehow is able to get in, go on the last couple days. Yeah. Now, if you want to be in the zoo where you can't walk at all, you go on Wednesday or Thursday. Yes. And come by our stage. Yeah, that, that's true. Be we'll, be, we'll be hanging out we'll there. Be I mean, there we'll, be ba- we'll be bouncing around and stuff. Yes. But, um, so, yeah, that's, that's my recommendation for CES. And it is fun, man. Okay. It is totally, yeah, 
semi unapple related, but still tech related. So we want to answer that. Okay. And the last voicemail. Uh, hey, Brian. Hey, Stephen. Uh, my name is Colin, and I'm from British Columbia, Canada. And I have a question about the iPad Pro. Uh, do you think it would be more useful as a productivity tool and a laptop uh, replacement if it ran Mac OS X or some hybrid of iOS and Mac OS? I think it would make app developers more willing to produce quality Pro apps for the platform, like putting Final Cut Pro or Logic Pro, because I know there's probably some professionals out there who want to create more high-quality video production and music production. And plus, a lack of a trackpad and mouse input is annoying to get basic productivity done. Thanks. I love the show, guys. All right. So, you know, question about can it be a more productive tool if there's a hybrid of OS X? That's what last week, that is what we were. I, I've been requesting the iPad Pro has potential. It has the power to support this, but they don't have a proper OS that is really going to be able to allow me to use it like my laptop. Yes. It just can't be done. You can do things, but there's a point where you don't, you can learn to do things differently, but when it's really less efficient or honestly takes more time, you're going to stop doing it on there. It's going to slow you down too because you have to close out. It's going to slow apps. you. It's just going to be slow. And quite honestly, when you're in laptop mode, you don't want to be touching the screen and then going to keyboard and touching the screen. You actually want to keep it all in that one spot. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. just more efficient. So uh, they definitely need to do that. Another sign, and he brought up a great point, and what I've been saying, look, Apple didn't even release Final Cut Pro or Logic for their own platform to no. show the potential of Pro apps on an iPad Pro. That's a red flag right there to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, they have it, Pro in the name. and They, they support, it. they have their own Pro suite. They didn't make anything for the iPad Pro no. on launch. Yeah. Mo that's a that's a no-no. <laughs> so... I've always said until there's a killer app that is using the i the pencil tech and the iPad Pro from the ground up to show us a proof of concept that yes this is a truly pro whether you're a creative or a video editor or something show me its full potential in front of me so I can really say yes this is what it's for but until then it is still a little half baked and quite honestly why did I buy it I want a large big screen iPad to consume tons of media I read comics movies. I'm on the go all the time. That's why I wanted a bigger screen iPad with the idea that maybe I could be a little productive with it. That's why I bought it. And do I know I spent a lot of money on it, but I travel a lot. So, but I didn't buy it and I've used the pen a lot and it is really cool, but it's not cool enough. Mm -hmm. It needs better apps. It's almost there. It's, it's getting there. So, uh, they, they, I, I really feel like they need to work on it. They are light years behind what the surface is doing. Unfortunately, the surface is bugaboo is that it just doesn't have enough apps. That's right, yeah. If it and they did, all look very cheesy and flat. Yeah. If it did, <laughs> totally different story. Yeah. But everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. Uh, I really wanted to actually answer a question that the Periscopes were giving, but they had really lame questions like if I wanted to smoke out with them. <laughs> um, there were just like dumb comments. Like I was like, hey, maybe they should ask an educated question. I'd actually like answer it, but it didn't happen. Today. It didn't happen this week. Uh, they're like, what's going on with your hair? Just, these are uh, important things. These are important are things they people really? want to know. No, I'm just kidding. People <laughs> want to know. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for hanging out with us on this Thanksgiving edition of the Apple Bite. For all of you in the, in the U.S., uh, happy Thanksgiving. Yes. For all of you not in the U.S. that aren't celebrating, still spend time with your family and friends. That's what it's all about. We are just blessed to be able to play with all these tech toys. We will be back here next week. Yes. Right? Next Friday. Next Friday. Again, thanks so much. It's the Apple Bite Extra Crunchy. Keep it rolling. We'll keep it rolling for you guys. For Mr. Stephen Beach and myself, peace.